Why does composition and framing matter in photography? Well, it's simple. These two elements are the secret ingredients that can turn a mere snapshot into a masterpiece. Composition, the arrangement of elements within a frame, and framing, the use of surrounding context to highlight the main subject, are the very foundations of captivating photography. Imagine a photograph as a blank canvas. Composition and framing are the brushes and colors that you, as an artist, use to paint your visual story. They guide the viewer's eyes, evoke emotions, and create depth and context. They can transform an ordinary scene into an extraordinary one, making even the mundane look magical. But of course, mastering these elements is an art in itself. It requires practice, intuition, and most importantly, an understanding of some fundamental principles. Today, we'll delve into the world of composition and framing, starting with the rule of thirds. What is the rule of thirds and how can it enhance your photography? Well, the rule of thirds is a fundamental principle of photography that helps create balanced and compelling images. Imagine your viewfinder or screen divided into nine equal parts by two equally spaced horizontal lines and two equally spaced vertical lines. The rule of thirds suggests that you should position the most important elements in your scene along these lines or at the points where they intersect. This technique allows the viewer to interact with the image more naturally. Human eyes naturally gravitate towards these intersection points rather than the center of the shot. It's a way of using our brain's inherent perceptual tendencies to add balance and interest to your photos. Let's illustrate this with some examples. In portrait photography, you might place the subject's eyes on the top horizontal line, creating a sense of space above their head, and letting the viewer engage with the subject's gaze. In landscape photography, you might align the horizon with one of the horizontal lines, depending on whether the sky or the land is more interesting. Placing the horizon in the middle can seem static and dull, but aligning it with a grid line can add a sense of dynamism and depth. When capturing architectural structures, align the building along one of the vertical lines. This can infuse the photo with a sense of grandeur and emphasize the scale of the structure. The rule of thirds is not a hard and fast rule, but rather a guiding principle. It's a tool in your photography toolbox that can help you compose engaging images. Like any tool, it's not right for every situation. There are times when breaking the rule can result in an even more extraordinary image. So, by using the rule of thirds, you can create photos that are visually pleasing and engaging. It's a simple yet powerful tool that can greatly enhance your photographic composition. Harness its power and you'll master the grid in no time. Have you ever wondered how to guide your viewer's eyes to the main subject of your photo? Well, the answer lies in two powerful tools, framing and leading lines. Let's dive into the concept of framing first. Framing is a technique where you use elements within the image to create a sort of frame around your main subject. This can be anything from archways, window frames to branches of trees, or even blurred objects in the foreground. Framing helps to isolate the main subject from the rest of the image, and it's a great way to draw the viewer's attention directly to where you want it. But how about when there's no obvious frame in the scene? That's where you can start thinking creatively. You can use natural elements like the curve of a river, the line of a horizon, or the shape of a mountain range. You can also use man-made elements like the lines of a road, the arch of a bridge, or the pattern of a fence. These can all serve as frames, guiding the viewer's eyes towards your subject. Now let's move on to the concept of leading lines. Leading lines are lines that lead the viewer's eye from one part of the image to another. They can be straight, curved, diagonal, or even zigzag. The key is that they guide your viewer's eye towards the main subject. Think about a winding road stretching into the distance, or a row of trees leading towards a house, or even the line of a model's gaze. All of these are examples of leading lines, and they can be incredibly powerful in directing the viewer's gaze. It's important to remember that these tools aren't rules, but rather techniques to help you create more engaging and dynamic photos. They can be used together or separately, and they can be as subtle or as obvious as you want them to be. With framing and leading lines, you can create a path for the viewer's eyes to follow, adding depth and interest to your photos. So, the next time you're out with your camera, why not give these techniques a try? You might be surprised at the difference they can make. Ready to take your photos to the next level with advanced composition techniques? Let's dive into the world of depth, balance, and focus. First off, let's talk about depth of field. This is the distance between the closest and farthest objects in a photo that appear acceptably sharp. 
Think of it like this. When you peer through a window, your focus shifts from the window pane to the scenery outside. That's depth of field at play. A shallow depth of field can make your subject pop by blurring the background, creating that dreamy professional look. On the other hand, a deep depth of field keeps everything from foreground to background in sharp focus, perfect for landscapes or architectural photography. Next, we have balance. Visual balance in a photograph is like the balance on a seesaw. When one element is heavy, it can make the image feel lopsided or unstable. Balance can be achieved in two ways. Symmetrical balance is when elements on both sides of an image have equal weight. It's like looking in a mirror. What's on the left is mirrored on the right. Asymmetrical balance, on the other hand, is when different elements on both sides of an image balance each other out. This might sound tricky, but with practice, you'll develop an eye for it. Now let's talk about focal points. These are the parts of an image that draw the viewer's eye. They can be anything really, a person, an object, a burst of color, even a specific pattern. Focal points give your audience a place to rest their eyes or understand the main subject of your photo. It's like the punchline in a joke. It's where the viewer's attention is ultimately drawn. But how do you establish a strong focal point? There are a few ways to do this. You can use the rule of thirds and place your subject at one of the intersecting points. You can also use leading lines to guide the viewer's eye towards your focal point. Or you can simply use contrast, color, or light to make your focal point stand out. Remember, photography is an art, and these are just guidelines, not hard and fast rules. Feel free to experiment and see what works best for your style and your subject matter. The most important thing is that you're telling a story with your photos, and depth of field, balance, and focal points are some of the most powerful tools in your storytelling arsenal. By mastering these composition techniques, you can create photos that are not only visually pleasing, but also tell a story. Now that we've covered the basics of composition and framing, let's summarize what we've learned. The rule of thirds is a fundamental concept in photography. It's a simple technique but can have a profound impact on your images. By dividing your frame into a 3 by 3 grid and placing your subject at the intersections of these lines, you can create a sense of balance and interest that draws the viewer in. It's a technique that's been used by artists for centuries and is just as effective today. But the rule of thirds is just the beginning. Framing and leading lines are equally vital tools in your photographic arsenal. Framing allows you to use natural or man-made elements to set a stage for your subject, drawing the eye and adding context to your images. Leading lines, on the other hand, guide the viewer's eye through the image, creating a sense of movement and depth. We also delved into some more advanced composition techniques. Understanding depth of field and focal points can give your images a professional edge. By manipulating your depth of field, you can isolate your subject against a blurred background or bring every detail into sharp focus. The choice is yours, and it's these decisions that bring a creative touch to your work. Balancing elements within the frame is another crucial aspect of composition. It's all about creating a sense of harmony in your image, whether you're working with a single subject or a complex scene. The balance can be symmetrical or asymmetrical, each offering a different visual impact. With these techniques in your toolkit, you can elevate your photography from simple snapshots to engaging, dynamic images. These principles of composition and framing aren't just rules to be followed, but tools to be explored and experimented with. Remember, the key to great photography is not just what you capture, but how you capture it. So get out there and start experimenting with these techniques. Happy shooting!